Howdy friends, Guthrie Trap coming to you here from East Nashville, Tennessee here in my living room. Got my little Princeton Reverb back here, 66 Princeton Reverb on about two and a half and my 69 335 here that I love so much. Um, man, thanks again. Uh, always I'm going to say this at the beginning of these lessons because I get all the comments from the previous videos and they're just really encouraging, man. This is so cool. It's comments like those that, like I said, are going to keep this channel going and thriving and keep me inspired to keep doing these. Uh, you know, I'm going to try to do them Monday, Wednesday, and Friday for the next, you know, three, four months and see how that goes as far as building the channel up and all that. Always check out my links below. I got to say that too. Artist Works is amazing. Uh, my local and Skype lessons uh, that anything that I do on these videos is just merely scratching the surface. These are intended to to attract um, attention to the other stuff that I'm doing, of course, because this is my career, and I, I'm grateful for that. I really appreciate it. Um, but yeah, just scratching the surface here with these videos. If you want to dig deeper, shoot me an email. Let's schedule something. <clears throat> I'm around. I don't tour unless it's with John Oates or something special like that, so I've always got some time to, to do a uh, private lesson, which I love. Um, other than that, um, got about a you know, little window here in my afternoon. I wanted to do this video for the weekend starts. Hope you all have a really safe holiday weekend. And uh, the weather's beautiful here in Nashville. Gonna enjoy that and maybe go see Robert Randolph and St. Paul and the Broken Bones uh, tonight at a event we have here called Live on the Green. I was invited out to hang with those guys tonight a little bit, so that's gonna be fun. Um, got a call from one of my biggest guitar heroes in the world that I'm going to have coffee with in a couple days this coming Sunday. So I'm super, super, super stoked about that, um, as you can imagine. So lots of fun, inspiring, encouraging stuff happening, which um, is just awesome. So enough about that. Thanks for, my, for putting up with my spiel. And uh, I'm going to get into some playing now. What we're going to do now on this one, we're going to do some slow blues rhythm and some chord stuff that I will use, and then some fills and stuff. I got some turnarounds and just some fun stuff on a Friday here. So um, <clears throat> thanks for putting up with me. I love you guys, and I mean that. And um, this is a new exciting thing for me, man, this YouTube stuff. So anyway, um, we're going to get in the key of A. I'm going to start with this A uh, dominant seven chord. And you'll hear me say that we're not going to play these big bar chords. This is an instance where we are going to play this pretty full A7 chord here. <laughs> And I'll start by doing this blues progression and we'll add to that. I'm gonna turn my amp up just a hair. I know that is a little loud, but but um just want you to be able to hear that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna start by playing this A7 chord. Now I'm gonna hammer on. I'm hammered on that that major third. Kind of that D shape, the triad on the seventh fret, B string, G string, and D string. And that's kind of the effect. Now, that's a little tricky to do unless you use your thumb, which I don't mean to jump right into the advanced stuff, but we'll get to that. But here's a really cool thing. If you can start using your thumb for the bass notes, So the thumb wraparound thing is something that if you can get into that, just start thinking about it and trying it, it's going to take a little practice, but it's a really cool way to, to play the, uh, some of these chords. Don't worry too much about that right now because that is a little tricky, but playing these, uh, these blues uh, kind of fills and stuff, watch, I'm going to go through the progression and then we'll break this stuff down. time through the progression. Now you'll see what I did is I added an extra five chord on that progression and then I'll get into some of the little 
embellishments. I'm gonna keep this one pretty simple. We're not gonna do a whole lot of single note lead stuff. This is basically like rhythm and how you would back up uh, like a slow blues if there's a singer uh, singing or, or somebody else is taking a solo. You wouldn't maybe even play it that busy, but um, I'm trying to keep it interesting, but also tasteful, right? So with this, um, you know, I went through the chord uh, progression. Let me see if I can get to it again. I'll show you where it is. I, I added an extra five and I'll show you where. And it makes it, it just gives you a little extra chord to play over and just makes it a little bit more interesting, a little bit more movement, right? So we're gonna go here. Sorry, I hit my string, sorry. A little quick adjustment here. Uh, the pressure is on. And then so, um, let's start that up. So, um, right here. Quick five chord right there, quick E chord, before going back to the A. And it just kind of keeps that from hanging on that once uh, for so long. So again, that's starting from the top. One, two, three, four. Did. I'm going to just jump around here and cover as much of this as I can, but that turnaround is classic. That's something you got to know, and it's right out of your pentatonic shape. And so and then we'll get into a couple of those other little chromatic walk-ups and the slide and cool stuff like that. Maybe this Robert Johnson. That's cool, cool stuff. So, uh, but this turnaround that I just did, after we went through the whole chord progression, you heard me do this. is that's playing over a quick A, four chord, one chord, through the five chord. So that whole thing, when it comes around, it's A, sorry, I'm, I have a Ricola. The berry is the best. I'm, I like to mix it up between the lemon, echinacea, honey, or whatever, and the berry. I've been coughing nonstop for like three weeks. It's crazy. So anyway, forgive all this home, down home, homespun video production. I uh, know you guys love that. But so this again, right out of the pentatonic shape. So I'm going one, sliding up to the three, to the five, to the four. And that's looking out of that D chord right there. So again, right out of your... Tonic box. Here's the riff one more time. And then right there, oh, we're sliding up. Actually, you're going to hit that. So the whole thing in context, I don't want you to get confused here. So again, from this pentatonic box to this pentatonic box basically right so right back to the a I hit a little B note right there on the G on the D string uh, seventh fret to the ninth fret 
That brings us back home to the one, and then we're gonna walk up. So that, A, major third, fourth fret, C sharp, chromatic to the E. And then we're uh, playing there, no extra charge for being out of tune. It's Friday afternoon, folks. It's getting ugly. Um, but so, <clears throat> that little walk up is really cool, and you can add to that, so like, uh, right there so that was going from E to E flat to D so sorry then right back right so uh, a couple of things that I did um, before that you, you heard me do this going from one to the five so that's a, I mean to the four, that's the four, the D chord. That's a D9, and I'm, that's basically an A minor shape, but then you're playing the, the D, the, the D9. And this shape, whole step, slides up. You can do all three strings, D, uh, E, B, and G string, or you can just do the two of them, the E and the G string. So I'm breaking up the chords with a few little things, but not straying too far from the chord because that's, you always want to come back to that bass note because you want to keep it full sounding, right? So again, to the four chord. And I can always approach the cor four chord from the half step uh, above it. Same with the five chord. You're hearing that, right? So same on the five. When we go to the five chord, you can... chord I did another time around another round through I did this so what I'm doing there is I'm walking into that G shape by just using this walking into the major third of the four chord of D so looking at this G shape so I'm going from this A shape D my G shape D. That's why the partials and the triads are so important because we're picking apart these big chords and I'm just using that part of it, right? Those three notes. And then look, so there's my flat seven because there's my D seven chord, my E shape. I'm stealing from this to go. I'm putting the flat seven on the 10th fret D string. Up the arpeggio, but I'm doing it like a chord. Right back down. Right. So um, that's a pretty pretty cool little thing. I did the same thing on the five chord. this stuff down so slow and still be totally in the groove I'm trying to do the best I can but that's the idea is going from this the, the four chord Lesson down further back, so there's that. But 
Um, but that's the idea. I'm, I, and you saw what I did there on that last one. Uh, so from the five. Uh, I'm walking chromatic up a whole step to the D. Hitting the chord and then really emphasizing that major third by going into that shape again, right? So with all, that, all this vocabulary together starts creating... Uh, your your language for being able to, to play all these different things. You increase your vocabulary of licks, string those together, and then your playing starts becoming more in, in, interesting because you're developing this this um, library of licks that you can use over different things. Um, and I say licks, you know, I, I like to say that it's not good to teach licks, but um, you know, this is just these are things that you can use. They work timing wise, and they're and they sound cool. So, a couple licks here. On this video but um, this turnaround here too this is a great turnaround what I'm doing is I'm thinking about this big A chord I'm taking the high A with my pinky finger on the um, one two three four five fifth fret high E string fifth fret D string that's gonna be my flat seven of A that's gonna be my G note and I'm thinking about this G shaped A, a here and I'm gonna go walking this flat seven down and I'm pinching with my fingers the E string and the D string and I'm gonna walk this down chromatically on the D string from the G to my five right so that's another turnaround like you can use and all I'm doing is right here watch I'm, I'm pinching these each one gets one, two, two hits. Then the last one just gets one. So, uh. Right to my, back to my uh, five and then to the one. Right? Okay. Jumping around a little bit here on this video, folks, just wanted to get something out. I'm trying to stick to this Monday, Wednesday, Friday schedule. Um, there's a couple cool ideas in the playing some blues stuff. Don't forget this. Uh, quick five, back to the one. lesson just a quickie quick little lesson today I'm gonna give you a couple of my recommended listenings Albert Collins Co Collins mix track number seven frosty listen to the guest artist on there I think it's matter of fact I know it's BB King plays one of the baddest blues shuffle solos I've ever heard listen to his phrasing and how he's getting that shuffle feel in the pocket on this incredible record right there tons of blues guitar one of my all-time favorite records right here, Dire Straits on Every Street. This is a jewel. Paul Franklin's on there, Vince Gill, tons of Nashville cats on this record. It was the last Dire Straits record he made before he started his solo Mark Knopfler records. Amazing, amazing playing by everybody on this record. Definitely got to get that. For country stuff, you're not going to hear many people say this, but I'm a diehard Junior Brown. You're going to hear people talk about all the other guys that play country music. This guy to me is one of the most soulful and inventive and authentic, just great tone. Plays the killer steel licks on the Get Steel. Telecaster player, influenced by blues, jazz, western swing. Junior Brown is completely out of his mind, and I love him to death. This guy right here is awesome. He is the shit. Okay. B.B. King, live at the Regal. This is another blues Bible right here. You gotta see that. You gotta hear that. This record right here. Ry Cooter, Bop Till You Drop, unbelievable record, all styles, amazing rhythm section, Jim Keltner, all these cats, uh, check that out. Here's another one of my favorites, Dire Straits Brothers in Arms, fantastic record. Just throwing out some of my favorites, folks, I didn't grab all of them, there's another pile over there, I'll, I'll, I'll try to 
incorporate some more fun stuff into these videos. I don't want it to all to kind of start being the same. I want to kind of throw in some stuff. So um, thanks for putting up with me. Check out the links below. There's also a donation. Guys are starting to email me and ask how they can contribute to keeping this channel going. Had some very generous guys last week. Um, and so I'm putting my PayPal and Venmo information down at the bottom. If you feel like sending a little money to keep the, the, uh, the you know, lights on and the amp working and all that stuff, whatever it is, then thank you so much. It's not necessary uh, or, or mandatory or anything like that, of course. It's all free, but it helps, man. And uh, so, man, just thank you guys so much. Sorry for talking. I'm, uh, I had a bunch of coffee today, and I'm excited. Lots of cool stuff happening this weekend. So uh, stay in touch, and we'll see you guys real soon. Thanks a lot.